Wow. August was a weird month for movies because I saw Guardians of the Galaxy and then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pretty much back to back and just talking CGI critters everywhere. Starting with Guardians, I dragged two non nerdy girls to go see this with me. One of them hadn't even seen any commercials of it. Let's just say they came for the Chris Pratt left with the Batista. Meanwhile, I was falling in love with the raccoon. And then we all cried over the power of friendship. So yeah, it was pretty fun. The thing is, I really did not know what to expect from Guardians. See, I'm not familiar with the comic series, despite it being Marvel. And like most people, I only knew Rocker Raccoon from the random addition to the Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. The Guardians of the Galaxy are nothing without me. So from what I saw, it was, as usual, a fun, dumb, action-packed Marvel movie. And I loved it! Now, Ninja Turtles, on the other hand, had some pressure pushing down on it. And not just for me, every Turtle fan out there was dreading and readying themselves to complain about this already impending abomination. Why? Well, because of this guy. See, Michael Bay gets a lot of crap nowadays. I mean, most people love the first Transformers movie, including yours truly. It was fun to see those awesome robots from your childhood on the big screen in action-packed motion film. Sadly, the Transformers movies deteriorated over time, getting worse, cheesier, and people were becoming immune to Michael Bay's sexism and explosion fetish. I mean, so naturally he produced the new Ninja Turtles movie. And we were all terrified of the impending outcome. And yeah, it was pretty dumb. The plot was crappy, it was mostly about April, and I forgot the foot soldiers were in this movie. They were. They had guns. W what? Will Arnett, I didn't catch your name. Who are you supposed to be? Vernon Fenwick, that bastard who's always trying to sabotage April on the TV show? Oh my god. Oh my god, that was supposed to be a joke. I didn't know it was actually him. Why not? And no Casey Jones. Where's my husband? He was a major participant in my sexual awakening as a young girl. E. Ooh. It's too much information. You know what? I'm actually over Shredder now. I always like Crane more, and I find it weird that he's never been in any of the movies. So is there anything I like about the movie? Well, the action scenes were pretty fun. As expected, action scenes nowadays are usually very well done, but can suffer from the longevity issue. For example, the scene where they're sliding down the slope in the snow that's always shown on the commercials took way too long. This was like New York's tallest mountain. Where in the world did it come from? Also, I really, um... Mm. I liked the, uh, the designs. Don't, please don't hurt me! Yes, I really do like what they did with them. Yes, the fact that they have lips is creepy, but you guys notice that they have nostrils now too? And all everybody's complaining about is that their noses aren't big enough. You know what? I draw on cakes for a living, and I get requests to do copyrighted images all the time. So every time somebody commissions for me to draw a Ninja Turtle, I always go with the 80s cartoon version because they're just easier to draw. One time upon showing a cake to a mother, she mentioned to me that only judging by the face, that he kind of looked more like a frog than a turtle. And you know what? She's right! I mean, if they were really trying to be more realistic, they would have given them beaks like most box turtles have. But the originals did have this design, and people just want to see it imitated in the big screen. So, nostalgia whores? Yes. Creepy? Also yes. But... I love that they all look different from one another. In the original 80s series, the turtles had distinct personalities, but all looked the same save for their masks. This caused a lot of confusion in the animation department. Turtle masks are constantly changing colors with one another, voices are coming out of the wrong characters, the turtles are often holding wrong weapons. It is a god-awful mess. The show had a lot of mistakes, actually. Remember these two recycled title cards they would show all the time? Notice anything weird? Yes, Michelangelo has Leonardo's katanas. I mean, how do you miss that? Everybody knows what weapons they have. And I can understand it being one time, like, within the animation, but these cards are used all the time! Fix it, people! The other card was Leonardo sitting on the floor picking at him some pizza. I always thought that these two were somehow swapped at the last minute with Leonardo with his katanas and Michelangelo stuffing his face. But is there any real way to tell before coloring it? Because look, they all look the same! In the year 1990, a beautiful Mexican was born. Oh, and uh, the live-action Ninja Turtles movie came out too. This was actually the version of Ninja Turtles that I grew up watching. I didn't see much of the cartoon. It was already kind of out when I was born. In the movie, it's mostly their costumes and animatronic faces that differ from one another. I especially like Mikey's, who always looks so wide-eyed and totes adorbs. 
Costumes were used all the time back then because CGI wasn't really well developed yet. But actors always stated to feel better acting in front of objects and costumes as opposed to acting in front of a green screen of nothing. So thank god motion capture is becoming more mainstream now. And I know it's off subject, but Toka and Razor from the second movie looked really good too. I always liked Toka the most. Look at him. And get this, I have a dog and a turtle, and guess what their names are? Not Token Razor, it's Boomer and King Koopa. Anyway, in a lot of the illustrations of the turtles outside the TV show, they're shown to have each different shades of green. This actually really took notice in the first revamp of the series in 2003. The turtles again look very similar, all possess different greens as well as the masks. I thought that was pretty cool, but I will never forgive them for giving Michelangelo that nasty teal color. Then in 2007, the fan servicey movie TMNT came out. I remember this one kind of just sneaking into theaters, not many people making a big deal about it. This caused me to see it way later on, and while the plot was poop, it looked really good visually. The turtles are often shrouded in darkness, and much like the first movie, we actually get to see Raphael and Leonardo fight each other. Yeah, they actually knowingly duke it out with one another, and yeah, it's the most heartbreaking thing you'll ever see. Now, I can also never tell if this movie is a continuation from the live-action movies, which would kind of explain why Shredder isn't there, but at the end you can also see Splinter's Trophy Shrine that has Shredder's helmet, it has the ooze canister from the second movie, and then it has that crappy scepter from the crappy third movie. No speaking of that. Anyway, the turtles here all look pretty similar, with the exception again of Michelangelo, who always got the widest of eyes. When the 2003 series ended in 2009, a mere three years later it was revamped again in 2012 on Nickelodeon. This series is a lot like X-Men Evolution. Yeah, remember X-Men Evolution? It was like mutant high school alternate universe. Now, we all know that the Turtles are teenagers. Hell, it's in the title of the freaking franchise. But the other teenagers include April, Casey, and the foot girl Karai. Also, Donatello's in love with April. And Leo likes Cry. Yeah, that's... that's weird. Well, that actually might be leftover chemistry from the 2003 series where they actually shared some scenes together when she was the second Shredder. But Casey Jones is voiced by my boob husband, Josh Peck! Also weird, but I love it. This series also keeps the varying shades of green concept, but also adds little snippets of differences. For example, Donatello's got a gap in his front teeth, Raphael's got what it looks like to be a crack in his breastplate, not to mention they all have different colored eyes. Though in this version, they actually all look pretty angular, which I thought was kind of weird, but I guess you get used to it after a while. Now we finally talk about the new version. I think they look amazing, and I'm especially loving their body tape differences. I recently saw an illustration on Tumblr by user Mura depicting the Sailor Scouts. As we all know, the only thing that varies about the girls physically are the hair, height, and occasionally busts. But here, they're all different, with Moon and Mercury looking more chubby, Mars being tall and skinny, Venus having a more athletic look, and Jupiter looking the most muscular. I love variations like this, because when it comes down to it, everyone really does have different body type. Now, back to the turtles. Besides the fact that they all wear different articles of clothing, let's take a better look at them. Off the bat, we have Leonardo, who seems to be the most normal build, always standing very tall in a leader-like way. Raphael is even bigger, both height-wise and muscle-wise. This guy is huge. He puts Batista Drax to shame. Michelangelo, on the other hand, is the smallest, often hunching in a comedic way under his brothers. And last we have Donatello, who is by far my favorite because he looks like a green Ghostbuster. Donnie has a more lean look, and on the back of his shell is chock full of all this technological gadgets that reach around his front area, too. He also has these goggles that he wears sometimes when he's not wearing those big ol' nasty glasses. How do they stay on his head? He has no ears. I also like that they make his bow staff mechanical. I always felt it could break at any moment when it was just wood. Going on a Donatello tangent real quick, I didn't grow up watching the cartoon series, as you know. What I grew up with was the movies, mainly the first one. I always knew that Donnie was the more technical one, even though they only mentioned it in the fact that he fixes things like twice in the first movie. When I saw the second and third movies as well starting to watch the cartoon series, I was so surprised at how much of a nerd he was. I was pissed off. Could they have at least kept him a little cool? But I've grown to love my nerd turtle with all the adaptations. And he is cool because when it comes down to it, science is neato, and he's still a ninja, making him my favorite. You're a claustrophobic. <laughs> You want a fist in the mouth? Mm mm. I've never even looked at another guy before. We also have Splinter, who for the most part looks like a rat. I mean, of course he does, but he moves more like a rat in this one. I really like what they did with his eyes, they just look more rodent like. Also, he fights with his tail! That is awesome! 
Lastly, we have Rokusaki, aka the Shredder, who decided to skip the tutorial stage and just go straight to Super Shredder mode. I have never heard more disappointed noises coming from an audience. The whole theater was filled with seriously and oh my god! And one of my personal favorites, damn it, Michael Bay is not a fing Transformer! It destroyed me. It's like a. It's like an Optimus scissor hand. So there you go. I feel very 50-50 about this movie, but I'm a real sucker for things when things look beautiful visually, so yeah, I'd say I liked it. And if they make a second one, I swear to god, if they do not put Crane or Fly version Baxter Stockman or anything from Dimension X, I'm gonna go home and cry. I am. <laughs> anyway guys, thank you for watching. Now if you excuse me. I'm gonna go try some marshmallow and pepperoni pizza because I've heard it's the least uh, gut-wrenching of the TMNT pizza challenge. I might vomit.